Hello students, welcome to study IQ. In this session, we will be discussing about uh, history. Okay, so we will continue our discussion on history. So basically, uh, we have almost completed most of the sessions in history. So here, uh, in this session, what I'll do is I'll discuss a uh, time frame. Okay, so from 1773 to 1785. So this time we will discuss and mainly this is a time during Warren Hastings okay so we will discuss all the important events which happened during this time in that uh, especially 1773 regulating act will come and Pitts India Act of 1784 will also come okay so that too will be discussed and apart from that what was the governance of uh, Warren Hastings okay all those things will be covered in this session so when we start with this session basically first thing that we need to discuss is obviously 1773 regulating act so we will start Warren Hastings with 1773 regulating act okay so 1773 regulating act okay so the first provision is the governor of Bengal became governor general of Bengal okay so governor of Bengal became governor general of Bengal so that is the first point and that is very important point okay so here the post of governor general is actually created and don't forget apart from that there will be governor of Madras okay and governor of Bombay will be here it is uh, parallelly going on these are the three presidencies but here governor of bengal became governor general of bengal and when it comes to the superiority and inferiority uh, when we discuss about 1833 charter act this governor general of bengal became governor general of india then governor general of india is superior everywhere but as of now uh, we can say in manifest terms governor general of bengal is supreme with that word general but the internal matters within madras governor of madras is superior his rights is there always okay and similarly governor of bombay in case of internal matters governor of bombay having complete say over the internal matters of bombay but when it comes to the external matters when it comes to the wars okay war treaty or peace treaty etc if there is a difference of opinion between the governor of madras and bombay with the governor general then governor general word will be final that is in case of difference of opinion and exactly the same as what happened when it came to you know governor of bombay actually signed a treaty with maratha but governor general was not interested with that he came to bombay and annulled it and when the governor general went back governor of bombay for again signed the treaty but obviously the final law will be with uh, warren hastings but what i'm saying is in internal matters there is no such superiority or inferiority when it comes to external matters that too when there is a difference of opinion then the governor general word is final okay so here if you see here first point that i need to discuss is actually why it is known as regulating act it is basically to regulate now who is going to regulate whom it is a parliament british parliament or british crown is going to regulate the east india company in india okay so the parliament is passing this act to regulate the east india company's affairs in india so you can see the regulation starting here and it keeps on increasing so in pits india act you will see some more regulation and that regulation keeps on increasing 1813 1833 and in 1857 uh, the parliament will take complete control of india from the company and then it is the parliament which is actually british crown is actually ruling india okay so we will be discussing all these in the coming phase okay so the now what you need to know here is this governor general of bengal post was created along with four council members okay so now this is known as governor general in council governor general plus four members so if you see here governor of madras and governor of bombay is much more free but governor general of bengal is with the council so governor general of bengal cannot take decisions alone the decisions are taken on the basis of majority so here if you see now there are five members so three out of five should be there that's what majority okay and because of that itself you know Warren Hastings the first governor general he faced a lot of trouble okay because uh, the four uh, 
council members you can uh, you can consider this as cabinet okay current current or present day cabinet it is almost equal to that the decisions are taken by this particular body so uh, three out of this four gentlemen was always against Warren Hastings so Warren Hastings could not implement any of his decision and that's a major problem that Warren Hastings actually faced during this period of time okay so what I'm saying is decisions are taken on the basis of majority now okay so and Warren Hastings faced a problem here that is one of the uh, criticism or drawback of this 1773 regulating act or when we discuss about uh, Warren Hastings period we will have to talk about this why he faced so much of problem or there will be always a question that Warren Hastings period in history is known as trial and error period we will be discussing that question shortly but let's go through this act okay so governor general Be governor general of Bengal plus four members so governor general in council decisions are taken on the basis of majority now who is going to appoint whom governor general of Bengal will be appointed by see it is a head of the company so head of the company will be appointed by the company so East India company so governor general of Bengal will be appointed by East India company what about this four members I have told you this is a regulating this is for regulating so the company is now going to be regulated through these four members or the governor general will be regulated through these four numbers I have told you the decisions are taken on the basis of majority so what do you think if company is appointing these four members then there is no question of regulation here right so these four members are actually appointed by the British Parliament or the Crown okay so four members are appointed by the Parliament or Crown and through this four members you will regulate the governor automatically you will be regulating the company so I hope you understood related to the first point the governor general of Bengal post was created and four council members and decisions are taken on the basis of majority governor is appointed by the uh, East India Company governor general and the four members were appointed by the parliament now since these are again there are many more uh, you know council members will come you don't want to remember the names of all but since these four are the first time you need to know the name okay I'll give you the name and just remember these names they, they are Richard Barwell, Richard Barwell, Philip Francis, Philip Francis, George Monson, George Monson, and John Clavering. John Clavering. Okay, so these are the four names which you need to remember. Now, the council members it will be increased to uh, it will be decreased in the next act and then it will be increased further. Many more council members will come. So, you don't want to remember the name of all important names. I'll tell you when we proceed with the classes. Okay, so here these four names are important just because they are for the first time. Similarly, not all governor generals are important, but Warren Hastings is important because he is first. Apart from that, when we discuss about Lord Cornwallis, very important, Lord Wellesley, very important, Lord. Lord William Bentick very important Lord Dalhousie Lord Curson Lord Ripon Lord Lytton Lord Mountbatten all these people we will discuss in detail so you will not face any problem with modern India that I can guarantee you but what I'm saying is not everybody is important not every instances are important okay whatever is important from exam point of view I'll definitely cover that okay so so this is about the first provision second one is related to you know a supreme court so a supreme court has to be established and uh, the provision is in uh, you know 1773 regulating act so a supreme court has to be established and in fact supreme court was established in 1774 at calcutta okay but you should not be confused with the supreme court and modern day supreme court when we talk about modern day supreme court it traces its origin from 1935 government of india act okay so federal court and we will be discussing about in fact i have done this discussion you can get my videos so if you missed out my history videos i think the, some of the portions which i have left out that's what i'm trying to cover up here so otherwise you can get in touch with me here that's my instagram id zia safir okay and you can get all my videos in this telegram channel i have done almost all videos on history all economy and quantitative aptitude ethics also available and i am doing sociology optional also so you will get all my videos if you are watching me if you are following me you can get all my videos over there okay and if you have any doubts related to civil service preparation if you need any classes if you need any mentorship program guidance or if you need to write test series with me you can get in touch with me i'll give you my number also so this is my number 9790-892-697 or 
double seven double seven five so you can get in touch with me in any of this so this is my uh, instagram id this is my facebook id this is my telegram channel so in all these ways you can get in touch with me you can write a series with me okay or you can attend the classes also so anyway online classes are available with study iq apart from that if you need any help please feel free to call me okay so here we are talking about the supreme court what i'm saying is don't be confused it with the modern day supreme court so that when we talk about the federal court we will trace it from 1935 government of india Act. there was a provision okay and this is for the trial of europeans only so this supreme court is only for the trial of europeans because when they came to india the indian legal system the indian laws and european laws are totally different and poles apart so they never want their cases to be tried in the indian law they consider this as barbaric this is uncivilized and this is traditional okay so they want a separate court for trial of their cases so this supreme court is established only for the trial of europeans okay and the first chief justice of the supreme court was justice elijah impe justice elijah impe okay so that's about regulating act i hope you understood these two important position there are some other features also there but i'm not getting into that these are two most important provision okay so uh, supreme court has to be established and in fact it was established in 74 remember the act was in 73 but the court was established in 74 and the first chief justice was elija impe and this is only for the trial of europeans and the first one governor of bengal became governor general of bengal and uh, you know four council members decisions have to be taken on the basis of majority and the me governor general will be appointed by the company and the members are appointed by the crown okay so that's what we have discussed from the act now what we will do we will start with warren hastings okay so the first governor general was warren hastings so we will start with warren hastings and we will try to see what can be asked from warren hastings not much from prelims but you can obviously get a mains question okay so let's talk about warren hastings okay so the period is 1773 to 85 period of 1773 to 85 so uh, we will discuss everything in the chronology now we will discuss 1773 to 85 then we'll discuss 85 to 93 then 93 to 98 98 to uh, 1 1908 like that we will proceed okay everything will be discussed in chronology and whatever possible i'll try to complete in youtube okay so Warren hastings okay now when we start with Warren Hastings the question which can be asked in mains I'll give you the question first and then we can try to answer that particular question through that I can cover this topic Warren Hastings period in history is known as trial and error period discuss comment critically analyze etc this is how the questions will be asked now before we move on to that question I have used the word critically analyze I'll tell you how to write if you get a critically analyzed question okay so I'm just moving deviating from what we were discussing so this is some other context simply I'm talking about what to do in case of a critically analyzed question if you get see every words are important if it is discussed you need to write in a specific way if it is analyzed if it is comment if it is critically analyzed all you need different structures and you should have idea about the structure in which you need to write the answer without having the skeleton of your answer if you're writing an answer it's almost like committing suicide so here what I'll do is I'll teach you how to write a critically analyzed question and in the coming sessions and in the test series and everything I'll discuss what to write and what not to write and how to write and the way you write and everything we will cover okay so here you see uh, when we talk about critically analyze let's forget about Warren Hastings let's suppose you got a question on NRHM I'm expecting that all of you know this National Rural Health Mission suppose you got this question and you need to critically analyze okay so first what you need to do is you need to go for an introduction so you will write an introduction and you will say the rural health was very poor national rural health mission so rural health is very poor pathetic okay and you will write the problem of rural health and in this context the scheme is considered so good and which is desirable okay and required all those things you can say and then talk about the salient features of nrhm or you talk about what is actually nrhm is okay so you talk about what is NRHM so once you talk about NRHM now you follow this formula CCR what is the first C first C is actually the contribution the contribution of NRHM now you need to write so you can say the NRHM will be contributing towards improvement in rural health in all these ways and you can say one or two lines the contribution then comes the main part of this answer that is criticism okay then we will write the second C that is 
criticism so when you now there won't be any problem in criticizing the scheme simply you can write there is no need to study anything also you can you can say the rural health is very poor so the hospitals uh, lack of hospitals lack of doctors lack of nurses lack of infrastructure the hospital beds are not there okay and uh, the people are not aware so all these corruption all these things you can write when it comes to the criticism and i don't think that you will face any problem in writing the criticism now after writing criticism you can't simply end your answer with criticism you need to give some suggestions or you need to talk about some positive note right so that's why i have written here r that is relevance now you need to say what is the relevance so you will say even though nrhm is criticized on these accounts but it is still relevant because of the following reasons and you can say the rural health is so poor and you can also give some suggestions one or two suggestions to improve the current situation okay so i hope you understood what i mean to convey you every answer you need a structure and this is how you need to write especially if you get it in optional if you get it in essay gs you may be able to write you know in bullet points but still if you can write in a form if you can write in a structure that will fetch you very good mark that shows the character that shows the personality that shows the understanding and the knowledge also okay so i hope you understood so try to follow or try to understand the structure we will be discussing about different you know when you're writing the mains after the prelims in fact i was about to start that mains discussions it ethics and all after prelims but since it is postponed we are again doing these videos so after your prelims i'll be talking about all these answer writing sessions i'll, I'll take special answer writing sessions how to improve your answer how can you add value to your answer everything will be covered so you'll not face any problem okay just follow me just uh, follow my telegram channel you will get all my videos over there never if you are following me don't miss any videos okay not to all if you are watching me for the first time i don't know whether you are interested in the classes or not but uh, those who are following me regularly you complete my videos everything i will cover in the videos okay so when we talk about warren hastings we are going to answer that particular question warren hastings period in history is known as trial and error period so as i have discussed you need an introduction right now i'll give you an introduction so you will you know after you know uh, talking about this introduction and after knowing warren hastings i promise you you will be in a position to support warren hastings okay and in fact there was a question in 2014 mains dalhousie in all probable course could be called as father of modern india so once we done with dalhousie i hope most most of you have done with my classes on dalhousie you will be in a position to support dalhousie the contribution that you have done in terms of railways in terms of education in terms of post and telegraph in terms of hill stations in terms of uh, you know many other aspects the contribution uh, vidori marriage act all these are you know happened during dalhousie period whether it is intentional or something uh, different intention is different that's a different question but can he call him as father of modern india obviously we can call him as father of modern india okay so okay we will uh, come to all those discussions later but here what i'm saying is if you understand the period of warren hastings not only warren hastings whoever is going to come during this time is bound to make mistake so there is no point in saying that you know warren hastings has made a mistake warren hastings this per period is effectively trial and error period he is doing some experiments and whoever is going to come to his uh, area at that point of time is bound to make mistakes i'll show you and i'll tell you why okay and this is a kind of understanding that you need to have when it comes to history then only you can write a very good answer even in prelims also you need that level of in depth conceptual clarity okay so firstly you understand warren hastings is controlling an area bengal at that time was huge it comprise of you see the if let's suppose we are talking about bengal bengal comprise of you know uh, bengal obviously and bihar bihar orissa bengal and the current day bangladesh also right so one country in itself is there apart from that bengal it's such a huge area can you compare it with england if you compare it with uk it will be so small okay so now here you are dealing with a huge area so there is a lot of problem for you and you are not having any prior experience in governance you are the head of a private company so you came here for trade and now you are dealing with administration and all these things you don't have any prior experience even if you have prior experience you are coming from a very small country and now you are dealing with huge area maybe 10 times the area okay and you know you are coming from a country where 
mainly Christianity only. There is only one religion. When it comes to India, Hinduism, Islam, different religions are there. And there is a problem of regionalism. People are speaking different language. He is coming from a country where people speak same language. He is coming from a country who, they never heard of caste system. But when it comes to India, casteism, regionalism, linguism, all these are problems. Communalism, all these are big problems. Okay, so what I'm saying is whoever is going to come to India at that point of time is bound to make mistake because it take time to study all these. Okay, so that's what exactly what happened. Apart from that, there is a conflict of interest also between the crown and, uh, you know, governor general because the crown is controlling a very small area and, you know, the citizen of that country. That means he is under the crown and the private company owner of that country is controlling huge area than the crown than the queen then that obviously result into you know then ego clash and all these were also issues and you can see in the regulations keep on increasing over the company because of these reasons also okay so that is one thing that you need to understand with respect to Warren Hastings now you got the introduction okay now see what is the only uh, if you see here apart from that there are different other issues if you need to go for proper administration you need to have control over two aspects these two aspects you it should be in your hand what are they first of all you should have a control over the legal system secondly you should have a control over the revenue system so when you talk about revenue system now we had a typical system which is known as Lagan which was devised during the time of Mughal so Mughals followed a system Lagan but Britishers are not able to understand the because mostly the revenues are coming from where land revenue or coming from agriculture and they have not much idea about revenue collection they don't know how to collect revenue they don't know how much to be collected as revenue they don't know who will collect revenue they don't know from whom to be collected as revenue they don't know when to collect revenue okay from whom whether it is from the actual cultivator or zamindar it is a complex question okay or when is it before sowing or after cultivation who is it a uh, zamindar or the british official so all these are confusion or all these are the problems that they face with respect to revenue collection and when it comes to legal system and again there are problems especially when it comes to civil cases when it comes to criminal cases uh, mughals set some law so the criminal laws are based on the laws which are set by mughals which is partly islamic and partly local so which was followed across religion there is no difference it was commonly followed and it was followed across region and across religion but when it comes to civil law the civil laws are different not only different they are poles apart for example when you talk about law related to property okay so muslims from where they derive law quran and hadith hindus manusmriti so when it comes to property what manusmriti says is for hindus the property will be transferred from the father to son now which son the elder son or younger son and what proportion nothing is clear okay so there is a big problem over there and nothing is given to the daughter apart from some uh, in the form of stridhan dowry apart from that nothing is given when it comes to islamic system everything is clearly defined that the elder son will get this much younger son will get this much even the daughter also will get this portion and also it also depends on the size of the family etc right and if it is uh, you know your ancestor's property father don't have any right to write his will if it is his own property if it is the property which is made by your father then he had limited right to write his will if it is passed to him from the previous generation he have no right to write his will it will automatically be passed on to the next generation okay so there is a difference in property law when it comes to marriage law also when it comes to hinduism it is a uh, you know it is it is a, it is considered a sacrosanct right something which is very religious very divine so there was no concept of divorce and divorce was incorporated after independence only through hindu marriage act we will discuss about that post independence scenario but there was no concept of divorce or anything when it comes to islamic system marriage is a social contract so you enter into a contract and you can break that contract if you are not happy to live with that particular person and you know triple talaq i am not talking about the current contest currently what is happening we all know okay it is illegal now but triple talaq 
uh, through triple talaq actually a male can seek divorce from a female so divorce was allowed among muslim okay that means you can get separated but the reverse is also there but most of the people don't know about that people only talk about triple talaq reverse that means if a female don't want to live with a male counterpart she can also seek divorce from the male through an instrument called Cool. So it is similar to triple talaq. It is a other party is using, female is using. But people won't talk about this, right? So because even the Muslims also don't know about this. That is a reality. We are accidentally uh, Muslims and we are accidentally Hindus. Mostly, okay. We really don't know what is Quran. We really don't know what is Manus Mridi. Most of the Hindus don't know. Most of the Muslims don't know. What is the actual teachings? Nobody know okay so what is what is the actual teachings and what we are all practicing are entirely different and i would say we all are accidentally muslims and hindus and a lot of issues are also there there is no point in all these things right whatever it is i'm not getting into that uh, okay so this is a problem that Warren Hastings is facing. So I hope you understood the context in which Warren Hastings is coming. He don't have any idea about revenue. He don't have any idea about legal system and the area that he is controlling a lot of problems like casteism, linguism, communalism, regionalism and all these are, you know, whoever is going to come to this situation is bound to make mistake. Now, what is the choice with uh, Warren Hastings? The only choice with Warren Hastings now is to rule India, you have to study India so he decided to study india and with this a new branch of knowledge emerged that is indology okay so indology literally means to study india now let's talk about indology uh, i'm just deviating from Warren Hastings. in fact it is from Warren Hastings only from here also you can get questions so what is indology indology literally means study of india now how you're going to study india you're going to read the old uh, religious uh, text okay archaeological excavation king's writings the travelogues of different people so all, through all these you're going to study india so a new branch of knowledge emerged that is indology now the main objective is basically to read the old religious textbooks and translate it so you can see manus Mridi will be translated quran will be translated all these translations you can see and the first such instance this was actually asked as a prelims question in 1776 okay code of gendu laws code of gendu laws or gendu code what is this this is basically the translation of manuscript okay so basically to understand the customs culture religion etc uh, second important one that I need to discuss under Indology is actually this was asked recently I think in 2017 or 18 this question was asked related to Calcutta Madrasa okay so uh, Calcutta Madrasa even 2019 I don't remember exact year but recently in the last three year only this question was asked so in 1781 Calcutta Madrasa was established to study the Islamic religion and this one in 1784 this was also asked as a previous question Asiatic Society of Bengal was established okay so Asiatic Society of Bengal was established by William John by William John so it is uh, the main objective is to promote oriental studies oriental studies means study of East especially study of India so Asiatic Society of Bengal 1784 1781 Calcutta Madrasa 1776 Gendu Court very important from prelims point of view have an idea about this you can expect a question from this area so Asiatic Society of Bengal was established by William John to promote oriental studies or Indology especially India okay okay so that's about Indology now if you look into the understanding during this time there were two groups of people who were ready to study India so if you see Indology there were two types of people one group is actually the British administrators British administrators the other group is actually the scholars okay the British scholars British scholars so British administrators are studying India with the objective of ruling India so what they did is they totally maligned India Indian customs Indian culture and they have highlighted the bad aspects of India and they said India is very traditional very orthodox uncivilized 
and their objective or their role in India is basically to civilize India, to modernize India. And this is what the so-called white man's burden. So they highlighted this white man's burden. They, they only try to highlight the bad side of India. They maligned India. Okay, they, uh, they did not accept the culture, the customs of India. So this is one group, British administrators. On the other side, British scholars, you know, they will not be biased. They are academicians. They are studying with a different motive, right? Different objective. So they have seen it with, you know, great appreciation. They have seen India's custom, culture, etc. with great honor and appreciation. So what I'm saying is two different groups are there. Two different groups are coming up with entirely different understanding. One group maligned Indian customs, culture, etc. The other group honored and seen India's custom, culture, etc. with great appreciation. But whatever it is, if you see here, these two groups were British. Okay. So there is a very famous saying that the Britishers came to India and they taught us what we are, where we are, all these things. Okay. So from here only we started studying about India. So that's the point which I want to put forth. Okay, now after this we will talk about uh, 1784 Pitts India Act. Okay, so I'll quickly talk about that also. Pitts India Act. Pitts India Act 1784. See, uh, I've told you the Governor General Baron Hastings was facing a lot of problems from the four members. Three out of four gentlemen was always against Baron Hastings. Now through this Pitts India Act, this problem is going to be solved. How they're going to solve, I'll tell you. The Governor General of Bengal plus four members right so this became governor general of Bengal plus three members so four was reduced to three now you see when four member is there the council totally five member including governor general so what is the majority three out of five now four members are there what is the majority three out of four which one is easy to get three out of five or three out of four three out of five is definitely easy to get right Three out of four will be much more difficult to get. But how this issue is going to be solved? Now there is a provision that in case of equality, the, here there is a possibility that equality, two is two and two. In case of equality, the governor general will have a casting vote. Okay, so this is very important. Now I have already told you what is the difference between casting vote and veto. Okay, so I am expecting that you already know. If not, you have to watch my previous videos. I have done it in two, three areas. So governor general will have a casting vote here. So now how to get this two? you need to get the support of only one person from this three because governor general is one vote and if you get one more vote you will get two and in that context you will have one extra vote that is casting vote. So effectively governor general have two votes one in the first instance and if you get the support of one person one more vote. See only possibility that he cannot take any decision is all members are against him. If entire three stand against Warren Hastings or the Governor General, he can't take decision. If you get the support of one member and that you can manipulate, that you can manage, that you can bribe or do whatever you want, you can do that. You're a private company, they are the government officials, you can bribe or whatever you want you can do and you can get at least the support of one person then it is easy. I hope you understood this calculation, the mathematics behind this, okay? So that is the first provision, appointment etc will remain the same. Governor General of Bengal plus four became three. Otherwise, all, all same. Second, second, a board of control was established in England. Board of control was established in England. So this was in England with six members to regulate the affairs of East India Company. So a board of control was established in England to regulate the affairs of East India Company in India. So you see here, regulation keeps on increasing, right? So already there are three members now, they are regulating along with the Governor General. So they, these three members are in India and they are part of regulation. And then six more members, they are sitting in England and they monitor everything, right? So the regulation is increasing. So first provision, Governor General plus four became three. Second one, Board of Control was established with six members sitting in England to regulate the affairs of East India Company in India. Third one, there is a provision of recall. The provision of recall means see who is appointing the governor general company even though the governor general is appointed by the company if the parliament or the crown is not satisfied parliament can recall so the provision is the parliament can recall any of its officials obviously these three members are appointed by the parliament so they can recall so the provision is like this parliament can recall any of its officials including governor general why i'm specifying governor general is because governor general is appointed not by the parliament but by the company 
so I hope this is clear so that's about pits in the act okay now I'll back to that question which we have discussed right the period is known as trial and error period right so here now apart from you talking about introduction and all these contents all these things you can mention over there and then you can talk about uh, you know the settlement the revenue settlement he tried okay see uh, in 1772 1772 to 1777 he tried a settlement which is known as quinquennial settlement so he, he actually allowed the zamindars to fix the tax so it was like this it was done through open auction process so government announced that you know we are going for selecting the zamindars so zamindars will collect the tax from the peasants so who collect decided zamindars from whom they will collect decided that is from the peasants so zamindars are going to collect the tax now how to select the zamindar zamindars are collected uh, selected through a bidding process so there will be an advertisement so there will be announcement that we are going to uh, go for a bidding process so the person who caught the maximum tax will get the zamindari ship now understand when you get the zamindari ship you get you get a lot of advantage like policing power etc police reforms is coming in 1993 till then actually zamindars are enjoying the power of policing okay so with that you know many zamindars are ready to or many people are aspiring to become zamindars since the power that they're going to get and the money that they're going to make okay so they will come for the bidding process and let's suppose from this land let's say the maximum that you can get is one lakh suppose you can get the maximum one lakh as revenue but you know you will caught an extremely high amount so that you get the zamindari ship so you will caught five lakh so you'll get the zamindari ship okay and this is for five years and you are entering into a five-year contract so next year you don't want to pay if you have you need to pay if you don't have it's okay and five year you can survive without paying the government so after five year if you are not paying you will lose a zamindari ship there is no punishment or anything so what the zamindars will do they keep on not paying so five year they will enjoy what the maximum they can happen they will lose a zamindari ship okay and they are very much happy with that because five year they have enjoyed the power and they have earned money also so let's suppose they have collected this one lakh do you think that they will pay 1 lakh to the British? If they pay 1 lakh, they will lose the zamindari ship. If they pay 10,000, then also they will lose the zamindari ship. So which one is better? If you are not paying 5 lakh, definitely you will lose it. So don't pay whatever you collected. Just pay something and say that we were not able to collect. So you will only lose the zamindari ship. Okay, so this was the problem that the British has faced. Actually, they plan everything on the basis of 5 lakh expectation, but they, they were not able to realize this. So that's why we are talking about trial and error period. What is the problem here? The problem is you are allowing the zamindar to court this price. Not the state is fixing the price. That will be solved when it comes to permanent settlement by Lord Cornwallis. We will discuss that in the next session. Okay. Now here some modifications will be done by uh, Warren Hastings. After five years, he realized that you know if you are allowing this, uh, this for five years, this will be very difficult. What he did, he made it to one year. So from 77 it is one year, but still the system remains the same. You are allowing the zamindar to court. So in five years you are able to collect one lakh means in one year how much you can collect? 20,000. You can collect 20,000, but you caught one lakh. But still you will not be able to get it. So you might be getting 20,000, but you will not pay that 20,000. You may pay 1,000 or 2,000 to the British and will say that I am not able to collect it. You will lose only the zamindar ship. There is no other punishment. So this is how they face problem they were not able to plan anything they were not able to implement anything they were not able to collect the revenue so this was a major trouble now apart from that Warren Hastings uh, he is the only governor general who was booked for a murder case okay there was a Bengali trader his name is uh, Nanda Kumar and he accused Warren Hastings for a corruption case but later he was uh, he was hanged in a fabricated case in that case Warren Hastings was actually tried but he was left uh, he was let free because there was no evidence against him okay so this is about Warren Hastings so the trial and error you can answer with a proper introduction I've discussed you can talk about the issues like uh, big uh, area then the pr various problems like linguism regionalism communalism all these casteism okay then you can talk about the problem of legal system problem of revenue system and then you can talk about the experiments that he did okay this this quinquennial settlement so with that you can say now you can conclude by saying supporting or opposing or by neutral or whatever it is you can even say that not only Warren Hastings whoever is going to even Dalhousie could have also made the same mistake it's not a mistake through this only they have learned whoever is going to come they would have tried the same 
so we can't say it's a mistake they have learned see mistakes are essential mistakes are required so through that you are learning right so they and their system got strengthened in india because of the mistakes which the initial people made okay so mistakes are always essential mistakes will make you mature mistake will make you learn more thing if you're not making mistake at some point of time something big happen then it will be a big collapse so i hope you understood now without being you know an indian or english without being an upper caste or lower caste without being you know hindu or a muslim what you what you know the fact you interpret that you don't want to support the varan hasting then it look like an english you don't want to criticize varan hasting then it look like a pure indian you can be very neutral and write a very good answer so i hope you got the content for your mains as well as for prelims and that's about varan hastings okay we will continue the session if you have any doubt please feel free to call me or message me i am available in whatsapp telegram i have given you my number apart from that this is my instagram id zia safir you can follow me over there you will get everything over there i'll try to offer my maximum support for the civil service preparation okay whatever i know i can share with you i am taking almost all the sessions ethics i am doing history economy sociology option if you are sociology optional you please watch my videos and that in itself is enough for you to do there is no point in you know going for the costly coaching and you may not get at this quality also i can guarantee you okay and this is my number 9790 Eight nine two six nine seven. You can get in touch with me WhatsApp or Telegram. If you need to write a test or any help, any mentorship or any help required to or required for civil services, I'm there. Okay. So see you guys. Thank you.